I'm on my way there now to get a COVID test. There's something wrong with it? Let's check again. It's not good. There's like zero people at the airport. I think I've been walking for at least one kilometer right now. Looks like it is a totally full flight. How am I going to get money for the taxi ride home? So we're getting close to the Shenzhen Wan border. Seems like a long road ahead. No filming for now. I was caught between the mainland Chinese and Hong Kong borders. Ooh, looks very pro. Hey guys, happy new year. So it is Sunday morning, 9 a.m. January 3rd, and I'm on my way to Jiahui Hospital, which is, in my opinion, the best, my favorite hospital. It's a hospital that China needed, that Shanghai needed, that finally has arrived. It's like, oh, thank God. I'm on my way there now to get a COVID test because I need to do it within 48 hours of arriving in Hong Kong, and I'm flying to Hong Kong tomorrow. So for Hong Kong, I'm actually going through the Shenzhen Wan border. It's called Shenzhen Bay, as opposed to flying to Hong Kong. The reason I don't want to fly to Hong Kong, there's two reasons. Firstly, the airport, I mean, there's everybody coming back from the UK, from America, from other high-risk places, from India. And now there's that, you know, COVID super strain from the UK. So to me, it's like, even if I don't have COVID, if I go to the airport, there might be a chance of me getting COVID, you know, just using the restroom, pushing open a door. Who knows? I want to avoid the Hong Kong International Airport. Shenzhen Wan is a land crossing. What I've decided to do is fly from Shanghai Hongqiao Airport to Shenzhen, which is like a two hour flight. And Shenzhen is like that province of the part of mainland China that's closest to Hong Kong. So I'm gonna get off there. Actually, I did this back in August. Get off there, get my bags, hop in a cab straight to that border. And then it's a land crossing. And last time in August, it was empty. So it took me all of 15 minutes to go from like one place to the other, which is amazing because usually it takes up to an hour. And also the great thing about Shenzhen Wan is that anybody who lands in Hong Kong International Airport has to do a nucleic acid test and they make you wait. It used to be eight hours, now it's three hours. But for Shenzhen Bay border, it's so safe in mainland China now that you actually don't need to do a nucleic acid test. Or I think you do it, but you don't have to wait. I think then you can go home. I also got an exemption from the government to quarantine because of work reasons. And so that, you know, makes all the difference. Because as some of you know, I quarantined three times last year. That's 75 days, basically. Uh, one month and a half. And like, Quarantine in China and Hong Kong, let me tell you, is not the same as quarantining like anywhere else in the world. You guys probably saw my vlogs. It is pretty, pretty intense. So thank God at least now going to Hong Kong because I got an exemption from the government. I won't need to quarantine when I go there. But of course, when I come back to China, I will need to quarantine. What can you do? When we get to the hospital, let's see what happens. All right, guys, oh, let me show you Jiahui Hospital. It is a beauty. Let's see if we can get a shot. Jiahui International Hospital. And here we go. Hey, I have to show them my health code now. Hang on one sec, guys. Everybody doing their health QR code checks. Now we're going to go in. This is the inside, it's so beautiful. Jijun. Okay, so we need, because it's Sunday, we need to go to Jijun. Jijun is the emergency area. Look how pretty this is. They even did a little tree. Emergency is where we're going. So um, I had my assistant call like all the different hospitals. There's a list of local and public hospitals that you can go to. You need to have this kind of, it's like an ISO something, something, something approval is the only one that the Hong Kong government will accept. And you know, the local hospitals, some of you guys saw my Instagram stories. By the way, that's a plug for my Instagram. Follow me, Sarah Jane Ho. They're really unpleasant, but you know, coming to this place, obviously, usually a COVID test costs about 200 something renminbi, which is 30 US, but I'm getting a sped up one. So that's like 800 renminbi, which is like 120, 130 US. Because if you take it before 3 p.m., they can give you your report like same day as opposed to waiting for the next day. 
Right now it's 9 a.m. Hopefully I can get my report this afternoon because, you know, you kind of have to juggle the times, right? So tomorrow morning I have a 10 a.m. flight to Shenzhen. By the time I get to the Hong Kong border, it'll be like 1 or 2 p.m. So once I heard that Jiahui offered this and it was like the ISO whatever approved, I was like, perfect. Okay, so let's go check out the emergency. Ta-da! And here we go. Emergency room is so nice. What I also love is that all the desk, the desk people are like multilingual. Hey, uh, Okay, so it's 35 US um, and I'll get it tomorrow at 9.15 a.m. That's the normal speed. So is high speed. That's, that's like getting it the same day. So it's like 120, 30 US. In four, four to six hours. Okay. I'm gonna do the high speed one. I love the service here. So let me show you guys the, the form I need to fill out to do this. So the front desk was kind enough to give me a template of what the result will look like. So here you can see patient name, age, blah, 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 clinical lab report, and then details here. So professional. So I believe that the way to see how nice a place is, is actually to see the bathroom, especially in China. So let's take a look. Oh, is it one bathroom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I Oops, that was male, this is female. And check this out. So nice and clean. It's brand spanking new. And it's just very tidy and organized. Dyson, residual waste. Seven steps to washing your hands. Tibu Xi Shou Fa. Gojo. Automatic dispenser. Thumbs up. Toilet cleaning record. Date and time. Exactly what was cleaned. Mirror, tap, floor, toilet, bowl, toilet paper, hand paper, hand washing, and the cleaner. I mean, that's just amazing. That's kind of the place where you want to go to a bathroom. So since COVID, my new habit is that after washing my hands and uh, wiping them dry, I keep this and I use this to open the door because honestly, there are so many people that don't wash their hands. Definitely do not want to get their germs. Here they separate hospital waste with residual waste. Back. I guess it's a bunch of families who are also looking to travel soon and need to have this COVID test. Okay, so step one, what do you First step is we need to check my temperature. Can you open it? Okay, so now we're checking my temperature. And it is... I need to check again. There's something wrong with it? I need to check again. It's not good. Oh, it's so hot. Okay, checking again. Like yeah. Not sure what's going on. Let's do this again. Do you do? 37.1. Phew. Okay. Okay, so now she's ready. Oh, now she, she disappeared. Okay, guys, we're going in the emergency area to do the proper COVID test and they're not gonna let me take videos, so no filming for now. Oh, it looks very pro. Whew, so that's done and over with. They didn't let me shoot the inside, guys. Um, sorry I couldn't show you, but basically they do two tests. They do two swabs. One swab is deep down your throat. The other one is deep up your nose. <laughs> the throat one is actually okay. You just kind of feel like you're about to cough. The one up your nose is really unpleasant, but what can you do? 
I'm actually really surprised that little kids are able to do this, you know, five, six, seven year olds, because it's not easy. And I asked the lady, I was like, oh, a lot of people doing it now, because obviously I saw a bunch of families. She's like, yeah. I was like, oh, so are they all going out of the country? Because, you know, it's not that easy to come back into the country anymore and you have to do quarantine. She's like, oh yeah, either they're going out of the country or they're going out of town, like domestically. So maybe they're leaving Shanghai to go travel and, you know, with schools these days, they're very uh, strict about where the kids are going and that you need to, when you come back from your out of town trips, you need to have a negative COVID test report for the kids. So that's the status. And now I just called a car to uh, take me home. And I get my report in four to six hours on an app and then I'll print it out, it's a PDF, and then I will take it to the border with me tomorrow. So after Jiahui Hospital, I'm in this other guy's car and he's telling me he was born in 1964 and he's telling me how when he grew up during the Cultural Revolution, it was really tough times. They couldn't dress warm, they couldn't eat full, well, their hands would bleed from doing hard labor in, in the field. Those are the Mao Zedong times. And uh, now he's a DD driver and he makes 20,000 renminbi, which is like just under 3,000 US a month, of which, you know, he probably profits about half, he said, because there's the cost of his car and maintenance and DD, which is the Chinese version of Uber, takes 20% of that. So they take out of the 20,000 revenue he makes a month, they take 4,000 and then he ends up, you know, 6,000 6, has gone to maintenance and, and oil and then he takes home 10,000. So he's really seen the change of China from back in the day when everybody was dirt poor to what it is now and kind of interesting. I love talking to drivers. So he started off uh, working at a state-owned enterprise and then he tried his own business and then he became a taxi driver for 16 years and now he's a DD driver. He's saying that, you know, our country's done, China has done really, really well for COVID, um, no matter what other countries, you know, say badly about us. Like, you know, we, we've really put COVID under control. Morning, guys. It is day two. So day one, yesterday, I went to Jiahui Hospital and got my COVID test. I got the report, it was in my phone on an app and I'm negative as expected and I got it in uh, four to six hours. I printed it out because, you know, when you're traveling, you always want to have everything printed out. And uh, now I am in a car on the way to Shanghai Hongqiao Jichang, uh, where I'm taking a flight to Shenzhen. Takes off at 10.30, arrives around one. Terminal 1, which is actually usually the international, except for, I guess, the Shenzhen flight. Oh, it's really noisy. So I'm at T1, Terminal 1 of Shanghai Hongqiao Jichang which is usually the international one. Sorry, I know that's really noisy. And that's why it's totally empty because T2, which I usually fly out of, is domestic and T1 is international. But uh, I guess now they've moved like one or two airlines over to T1. And I chose a flight that is China Eastern, but it's a co-share and now they've made me, now it's like Xiamen Airlines. So, but it's actually really pretty. I haven't been in T1 for a while because nobody flies international anymore, really. I'm not allowed to film me going in but once I'm in, I can film. So cool. Very high tech. Oh, I'm overweight. All right, I got my tickets, checked in my two bags, and I am ready to go. Oops. <laughs> Oops, bumped into someone. And it's getting busy now. People are arriving. So there's a VIP room that's outside. So it's like outside of the immigration area, which to me is like, well, so I'm just gonna go inside. And apparently there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken and something else, one convenience store. So let's check it out. Oh God, there's a family in front of me. 
it's going to be really annoying. All right, so there's usually two different lines at China airports. That's normal line. This is first and business class line. Well, that was a very smooth process. And what I have to say is that they do like a body scan with this electrical whatever thing. Literally after every two people, they would disinfect it. So there was disinfectant spray, they would have this cloth, they would wipe it, spray it, and then call the next person. And the service was so good. They're really polite. When you come into the airport in China, you need to first put your luggage to be screened. My, my bag's kind of heavy, I'm always overweight. I'm always over like, and I have two bags this time because I'm going to Hong Kong for a couple weeks. So um, they help you actually carry it on the belt because you know the guy just saw that it was so heavy and they do that every single time and when they give you something they always give with two hands when they give back your id they're like oh you know they give it with both hands here you go miss uh do you mind taking off your mask okay now you can put it back on thank you blah 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 it's just i spent 10 years in the states I don't think I've ever had a pleasant airport experience in the States. I've been yelled at, you know, I mean, it's just like they treat you like a piece of meat. But here, it's just amazing how China has become more civilized. The inside looks like there's one little bookstore, very cute. Oh, and there's that KFC that they were talking about. Mmm, I love KFC. Look at that, and there's even K-Coffee. KFC does super well in China, guys, because people love fried chicken here. And then there's this other really cute place. It's like Japanese ramen. I mean, how cute is that? People with their own stalls. Mmm, ramen. Unfortunately, I've started intermittent fasting, which means no breakfast. So, gotta stay strong. Oh, and this is one of my favorite parts of Chinese airports. Drinking water. As you may know, we Chinese love warm to hot water. And when I used to go to boarding school at Phillips Exeter Academy, when I left Hong Kong to go to the States, it shocked me that in the middle of winter, we would go to restaurants and they'd serve you iced water. And I would always ask for hot or room temperature and people were like, what? And uh, my classmates would tease me for it. So firstly, just to show you that I'm a good Chinese person, I'm gonna show you what's in my bag. This is my favorite to me bag. Ta-da! Here we go. This is my water bottle. Yes, I'm very Chinese. I always keep it empty when you come through immigration, when you go through like your bag through the screening process because then you have to toss out all the water. But once I come through it, I always know there's going to be, whoop, there's a bunch of people with their flasks, you can see, and uh, they're filling it up with water. So I'm going to do that too. So I'm going to take my water flask and fill it up. And you know what's really funny is that I'm so Chinese that like, I usually put a bunch of uh, Chinese like healthy stuff in it that makes the water more nutritious. And I always get got very upset when I went through the screening process when they would take this out if I if I left water in it and they'd toss out the water and they would also toss out my. All right, so here we have hot water, warm water. There's a child lock so the kids don't burn themselves. My favorite is always the warm water, and this shows you the temperature on it. All right, so see, this guy's also going for warm water. I'm gonna do the same. Okay, now for the next check, bathroom. You always tell how good a place is by the quality of its bathroom. They used to be really bad in China, but now they're much better, so let's see. Okay, so it's nice and clean. And actually, there's no door, which I like now, because when you push the door, it gets really dirty. So you just kind of walk in like this. This is where you wash your hands. And this is where you wait for a store. And it's so clean. I mean, China's cleaned up its act. Looks like it is a totally full flight. Everybody's wearing a mask. Very full. Hello, Shenzhen. So that was a pretty painless uh, flight. Just about two hours. I read, I ate. And now I'm in Shenzhen. And this is the exact same trip I did back in August when I came to Hong Kong that time as well. 
Chen Chen Airport is so trippy. Okay guys, so I really need to show you what Shenzhen Baoan Airport looks like, the, the toilets look like, because it's so millennial pink. You walk in and there's this kind of like, let's take a look at it. It is a plant growing on the wall. All the stalls are pink. Yes, it is a hole in the floor, but there are about two of them that are normal toilets. Very pink, very green. Check this out, please recycle paper. And in fact, they have this as well so that you, know, you can be paper free. And again, there's no like door push. Oh, look how high tech that is. You just walk through. And then when we get over here, there is another water dispenser. So I'm going to fill up my water bottle again. I think I've been walking for at least one kilometer right now. Shenzhen Airport, in my opinion, is the longest, biggest airport in China for sure. It's like, oh, when will this end? When can I reach my bags? But it's right now, shortly after 1 p.m. I'm gonna pick up my bag. I might have another lunch at Shenzhen Airport before I then take a taxi over to Shenzhen Wan, which is the border crossing to Hong Kong. A friend of mine did it yesterday and said it was very, very smooth, no people which is great. Whereas if you fly through Hong Kong airport, what you need to do is you need to wait like multiple hours to get a COVID test. Even if you're coming from mainland China, because mainland Chinese people like, there's just so few cases now. Whew. By the way, I have to show you guys this brand, Cora Dior. That sounds very similar to Christian Dior. Digging for fluffy slippers. Got my luggage and check this out Shenzhen Airport, China, the Silicon Valley of China. Ooh, what's this? Landing in Shenzhen, and now it says scan the code and show the result. I'm guessing this is health code related. Okay, so random fact because I'm trying to change, get some Hong Kong cash for the cab ride home once I cross the border. So in Shanghai Airport, Hongqiao Airport, and now Shenzhen Airport, I've been asking around where I can cha exchange money. You know, there's like the money exchange counters. And they said that since COVID and since international travel stopped, they've all closed. So how am I going to get money for the taxi ride home? I just called my grandma and she's going to have her maid pay for me. Thank God. All right, back in the car this time. I'm in Shenzhen on a taxi on my way to the Shenzhen Wan border to go to Hong Kong. It's uh, 21 degrees over here in Shenzhen, nice and balmy, feeling a little hot right now. It'll be about a. We'll get there in about 40 minutes. See you at the border. So we're getting close to the Shenzhen Wan border, and as you can see, the vegetation is very lush. It's very similar to Hong Kong. Very green, very warm. Huh? Seems like a long road ahead. A lot of construction going on. Trickle of people. It's like one kilometer to walk over there, but you do gotta do what you gotta do. Everything's closed. So some people are going from Milan, China back to Hong Kong. All right, this is what it's looking like. So compared to when I came in August, it was like totally empty. This time there's a good 50 people in front of me and it's a half hour wait. Seems like it's uh, people are not waiting for quarantine to end. People are just, you know, going over and coming back even though they have to quarantine. Babies included, as you can hear. Hey guys, so a little bit of drama just now. I was caught between the mainland Chinese and Hong Kong borders.
If you're crossing Shenzhen Bay, you actually need to get a, and you have a government exemption, which I do. I have, I don't, I don't need to uh, quarantine when I come back to Hong Kong. Um, but in that case, you need a COVID test from one of 51 hotels in Guangdong province. But I'd gotten my COVID test from a Shanghai hospital. As you guys know, I was from Jiahui Hospital. So they were like, your exemption won't work. So you're, if you come into Hong Kong, you have to quarantine 14 days. I was like, well, can I go back out to Shenzhen and go to a local hospital there? They were like, nope, if you go back, you've, you've already left mainland China. If you go back, you need to quarantine 14 days in Shenzhen. I was like, oh my God. So obviously call my dad, be like, daddy, what do I do? And luckily, as you can see now, I'm in my dad's compound and he has an extra home for me to stay in. Luckily, thank God. So I guess 14 days of quarantine, here I come. It's gonna be my fourth time now. Bye guys. Hey guys, so I'm on my second to last day of quarantine and I wanted to post a little recap to this quarantine vlog as well as a moral to the story because there is a moral to every story and the moral to this story is that, well, I'm officially a self-professed covid -iot for not checking the travel regulations when I was traveling in times of crises and pandemics. Always make sure you're checking with newest regulations because they're changing every single day. <sighs> so yeah, so now actually it's funny, I'm entering my 60th, that is 60, 60th day of quarantine since March, 2020. In less than a year, I've done two full months of quarantine, that's right. It's, um, it's tough. It's been getting tougher and tougher actually. In March, 2020, my first quarantine in Shanghai was really fun. It was novel, it was springtime. It was like, oh, I was, as you guys saw, I was posting a lot of Instagram stories. And then with each time on, with each time on, it does get longer and longer. Although on the plus side, I do get very productive work-wise, banged out a ton of stuff. Uh, and I do get to watch a lot of Netflix. I'm chasing the Queen's Gambit right now. Hands up if you've watched it. I'm sure everybody seems to have watched it except for me. Now, 60 days of quarantine is no joke because you cannot compare it to London or New York unsupervised quarantine. I'm talking about mainland China, Hong Kong style quarantine where I have this electronic wristband and uh, there is this QR code and every day actually I have an app on my Hong Kong phone um, where it buzzes an alert and says please scan the QR code so I have to make sure Wi-Fi is on, Bluetooth is on and then that way and I do this once a day. I actually know some people who early on said they just cut the bracelet and they just kind of walked around town but obviously those days are gone now because things have gotten much stricter. Now if you're caught, if you're caught flouting quarantine it is a 25,000 Hong Kong dollar fine, which is three and a half K USD. And it is six months imprisonment, which it's not worth it. So uh, yeah, that's some more of the story. Oh, for those of you that want to see more snippets of quantity, make sure you follow me on Instagram, Sarah Jean Ho. And I wanted to share with you a little bit of what I've been reading, what's kind of been getting me through quarantine these days is this really interesting book on Mao. Um, by the author of Wild Swans, Zhong Chang, which I'm sure Asian girls out there, all of you read that read Wild Swans, love it. I read it when I was a teenager, I loved it. And uh, there's some really funny quotes of Mao in here that I wanted to share with you guys. So the first one is that when Mao was a bandit communist back in the day in the 1920s, he was kind of running around China, trying to conquer different pockets of China. You know, each time he settled in a village, he would take over somebody's house and kind of live there. So he said, Mao would describe how fit he was, applying his characteristic yardstick. I can eat a lot and shit a lot. And I thought, that is kind of the basis of healthiness. The second quote that I thought was kind of fun, oh, well actually, maybe kind of relevant to these times, given the recent stuff that's been going on in the world, but I'm sure you've all heard of this quote. In 1927, told an emergency party meeting, he said, power comes out of the barrel of the gun. And it is a saying that later acquired international fame. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments below. And the third and last quote of his that I'm gonna end on is, so, okay, firstly, Mao's married many women. He's had many kids with those many women. His first wife was when he was 16. His father arranged a marriage for him with a distant cousin who was a couple years older than him. They did not have children together and she died from sickness shortly thereafter. And anyway, he went on to marry many women. He said in a letter to a friend, I think that all men and women in the marriage system are in nothing but a quote unquote rape league. I refuse to join this rape league. He broached the idea of forming a resisting marriage alliance saying, 
Even if no one else agrees with me, I am my own one-man alliance. Those are three quotes from Mao that I'm going to leave with you today. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of them. Um, also, let me know if you've been through quarantine, what your quarantine was like in your country. And even if you haven't been through quarantine, what do you think, what's the thing that scares you most about quarantine? And what do you think you would need to have in order to get through quarantine? For me, it's books and Netflix. All right, see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.